Anna Ivanova, nicknamed Ivana the Terrible, was the niece of Peter the Great and became empress of all of Russia in 1730. She was a cold-hearted woman who tortured and imprisoned anyone who opposed her during her 10-year rule. So it was not out of character when she built a palace completely out of ice for the sole purpose of getting revenge. Today, we are looking at Russian Empress Anna's St. Petersburg Ice Palace. It was 1740, and Europe was in the grip of one of the worst winters in 30 years. Rivers such as the Rhine, the Danube, the Thames, and the Neva were frozen completely over, and novelty frost fairs, carnivals, and markets were held on those rivers. In St. Petersburg, Anna of Russia was busy having an ice palace constructed. And this was not just some hastily built palace. Hundreds of serfs and artisans were put to work on this project. The palace was 80 feet long, 33 feet high, and 23 feet deep. And it was designed in the classical style. The ice used was carefully chosen for its transparency. Each block was measured with a compass and rule before being cut and lifted into position. The blocks were joined with water, which instantly froze so that it appeared that the palace was one single chunk of ice. Ice trees were sculpted, some as tall as the palace. Others were dwarf orange trees bearing ice fruit. Ice birds set in the trees and were painted in their natural colors. Ice statues stood in the niches and the windows were glazed with ice. In the bedchamber, there was an elaborate curtained four-poster bed with mattress, quilt, two pillows, and two nightcaps, all carved out of ice. There was even a meticulously carved model clock, as well as all the other usual furnishings that you would expect to find in a palace. The most striking features on the ground was the life-size elephant, and it was ridden by a man in a Persian costume. From the elephant's trunk, a 24-foot spout of water jetted during the day, and at night, gasoline was used so that the animal spouted flames. A trumpeter was concealed inside its body to simulate roars. There were also six cannons and two mortars made of solid ice. The amount of gunpowder that they could withstand was carefully calculated, and they were fired many times without damage to either themselves or the crowd. The only thing not made of ice was a wooden fence around the palace to keep the public at bay, for this was not an extravagant but harmless folly for their amusement. The ice palace had been designed as a cruel jest for one of Anna's courtesans. Prince Mikhail Alexevich Galinsin was a relative of the leader of the Supreme Privy Council, and he had angered the Empress by marrying an Italian Roman Catholic without her permission. Unfortunately, his bride died soon after the wedding. Anna stripped Mikhail of his titles and made him a court jester as a token of her displeasure. She forced him to mimic and pretend to be various farm animals in front of visitors. But this was not enough humiliation. Anna ordered that he should remarry, and the empress herself chose the bride, a particularly ugly serving woman, and she had the ice palace constructed for their honeymoon. On February 6, 1740, the unhappy couple were married, dressed as clowns, and paraded in a cage on the back of an elephant leading a procession of grotesque human beings. There was also an array of animals, including bears and pigs. The couple was stripped naked and bedded down publicly in the chamber, and the empress reassured them that as long as they had sex all night, they would probably survive. With the guards blocking the exits, she left them to die. Much to her dismay, the couple survived. They traded a pearl necklace for a fur coat with one of the guards, and that was enough to keep them from freezing to death, and they were released the next morning. With the spring, the ice palace melted into the river, but Anna was fuming. She was further infuriated when she learned that Prince Mikhail and his bride actually got on quite well together. But before she could conjure up another punishment, she died of kidney failure in October of 1740 at the age of 47. No one, especially Prince Mikhail, was sad to see her go. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye now.